metaverse means mathematics and universe together metaverse. Now, as you can see here, today I am going to start a very new series of BSc mathematics, or I should say mathematics because mathematics cannot be divided into BSc, MSc, just like this. Okay, but generally, that matrix space is taught in BSc syllabus. Now, for matrix space, I have divided it into several chapters. The book that I shall follow is two books actually, uh, three books actually. The first one is by M. N. Mukherjee. Second one is obviously um, Malik Arora's book. The book of book by Malik and Arora, the real analysis book, or I think the name of the book is Mathematical Analysis. And the third book that I shall follow is uh, the Topology by Krasik. These three books will be followed. And if at some point I use some other book, then I shall obviously mention the three chapter. Now, in this introductory chapter, there are four parts. The first part I shall, that is today actually, I shall give the basic definition and some key examples of matrix space. In the next video, I shall show some inequalities that will be useful while proving uh, that the several spaces are actually matrix space while we shall prove them that these inequalities will be very helpful and next there I shall give some other examples where these inequalities will be used in this chapter and then will come a problems a problem set I shall give a problem set and from that I shall solve uh, at least 60% of the problems okay so entirely uh, all these four portions will consume six to seven videos and one thing more i'm not going to make my videos longer all the videos will be 15 to 20 minutes long and i shall provide as many information as possible in those videos i shall try to uh, you know explain the topics as clear as possible you guys please watch my videos again and again and uh, read this book particularly mn Mukherjee, which i think the best and most detailed book uh, this Malik Arora and Craze 6 books are also really very very good it is up to everyone's personal choice but I prefer this one because this book is only for metric space uh, Malik Arora's book is on mathematical analysis it has 90% uh, of portion devoted to only real analysis. Matrix space is just a part of this book. For crazy books for book also, it is actually a topology book and matrix space is just a chapter in that book. Though those chapters have given a huge ideas and huge concept. Okay, so let's begin with this one. Before coming to the basic definition of matrix space, I should say why the name is matrix? Why we are saying it matrix space? First of all, what is space? Now, while doing higher mathematics, we shall come by this space term again and again. Please don't think this space as the space we usually call the you know the intergalactic space or the space above earth no this is not type of that though those intergalactic spaces can be or actually is some type of mathematical space but still uh, this space concept is some more different thing actually space means has some place where something is there okay so it vaguely it vaguely you know relates with mathematical concept that is set okay and when i am talking about a set okay there are some points in it okay a set will contain some points or if i provide some conditions on that set then i will be able to say that this set is a particular type of space the first space that we encounter while learning higher mathematics is vector space 
Vector space is a collection of vectors. I mean, from a space means a collection of vectors from where we can take the vectors, that is vector space. And after that, the second space that we actually come by is this metric space. And after this metric space, you are in the ocean of spaces. There will be there will come topological spaces, and in topological spaces, there will be several other kinds of spaces also. And then there will come in, in functional analysis also this vector space uh, what uh, this vector space which I wrote here this vector space with some other properties will make a non-linear space and non-linear space again will form a banal space and then there will come Hilbert space and so many other spaces will keep on coming while solving the mathematics okay so this is just a beginning of huge number of spaces okay let's start with it so, so space is clear, space means a set along with specific conditions. This is the basic definition of space. Space is a collection of set and some condition is imposed on that set and those points on in that uh, space actually in that set, they always satisfy those conditions. This one was about space. Next is, what is this metric? Now, do, can you say why I mean this SI system of units is called metric system? Okay, so if you guys don't know why it is called metric system, then please just go through it. I'm not going to say it because it will take time. See, actually, metric vaguely represent the distance. Okay, so the distance between two points has somehow any relation with this metric space. We can think about it in this way. See, if we know the distance between two points, we can find some relations between them. And how that is going to be done, that will be shown in the next chapter. Not in the next video, in the next chapter, where I shall explain several concepts like uh, open set, closed set, neighborhood, all these topics will be completely based on this distance thing. Okay, let me come to the real number system or the R1 space. Then what I have, this is my real line, it is positive side, it is negative side. So between any two points, I am measuring this distance only. Okay. Whatever we have done in real analysis is completely based on distances. When we expand our thrust and we come to this thing, R2, there also, if this one is a point, this is the distance between the point and the origin. And uh, imagine if it is another point, then this one is the distance between these two points. So whatever we have done so far in real analysis or in uh, the analysis of Rn, we have done it using this distance thing, okay? So in general, when we are thinking about uh, abstract type of state where we are not saying whether it is R1, R2, Rn or what, when we are thinking about some kind of set which has a completely unknown type of elements like we call them as abstract set okay like i am saying there is one set x what is it that is completely different thing but i'm saying that there is one element ever one set x i don't know anything about it and i am then imposing this idea of distance on that set okay i had idea of distance for uh, real space I have idea of distance for R2, R3, but I don't have idea of distance for any other set. Okay, for a abstract set. Now, only abstract space means, an, or abstract set, I should say. Abstract set means 
a set about which I don't have discreetly idea. Now, what can I do? I can just imagine about that set and then on that set, I can impose some idea and using that, I shall try to understand the topological aspects that is open set, closed set, neighborhood and all this connectedness, compactness and all these ideas that I need to consider about. And what is the use of it if someone asks? This is very useful for developing several other theories. Those who have interest in general relativity theory and also in differential geometry, tensor calculus, in future they will understand how much important this matrix space is and what is the use of this metric. Okay, so without any more delay, let me come to the formal definition. Say, they say that there is one distance function d and the d function is from x cross x to set of all positive real numbers okay let's say this is the this is a function i'm not saying this one matrix metric because oh one more thing the term is metric not metric or matrix there are so many guys my have seen to say like matrix space or matrix space. It is not like matric. It is not last 10th examination. It is matric. Matric. M-A-G-R is metric, not matric. Okay. So this is a this will be called this will be known as a distance function. I shall come back to it later. But first of all, they say this is a function. This is a function from x cross x to r plus. Where x is what? x is the space that we are, I mean, x is the abstract set that we are working on, okay? And why it is x cross x? Because whenever we are saying about distance, the distance should be between two, I mean, distance should be between two points. And when I am taking two points in domain, I obviously need a, a Cartesian product of two sets, unless I cannot take two elements, I cannot take two elements from a single one. If I took it like d maps from x to r plus, then it would be like distance of some a element where a belongs to x. So what does it mean? Distance of a what from where? From where I am considering the distance. That's why I need another twin or the copy of x so that I can take two this type of a b where a and b both are from x and then I shall consider about the distances. So when I am talking about two sets, then only I can say, or, uh, when I am talking about two elements, then only I can say the distance between them. Apart from that, I am not saying anything about distance. Whenever I am saying distance, it means there is some other component rather than the first one. Okay? See, they say, or the definition says that this function will be called as the metric or the distance function if it follows the following axioms. First of all, first axiom, it says that d of x comma y is greater or equal to zero and um, uh, this holds for all x comma y belongs to capital X and the most important thing Equality occurs if and only if x is equal to y. It means that d of x comma y will be equal to zero if x equal to y and if x equal to y d of x comma y will be equal to zero now you guys may think that what while i am explaining this simple thing this intuitive thing in such a detailed details when i shall explain pseudometric then it will be far more clear why i'm doing it see it is obviously clear that distance between any two points in our intuitive idea see distance between any two points is always greater than zero okay and it can only be zero when two points are overlapping or in other words two points are actually same point then only we can have the inequality that is this one is greater than zero okay and it is called actually positiveness this 
axiom is known as positiveness. Okay, first one. The second one says that in some books you will find this thing, they will give up to this as the first one and this second portion as a second axiom. Okay, but if you write them in a single point, it is no problem. Second one is d of x y is equal to d of y x for all x comma y belongs to x. Be careful about this for all thing. Okay, for all, for some, for almost all, for most of the, these all terms are just only a single or two word uh, apart from each other, but they, their meaning are like from heaven and hell. Okay, so this, this means that if you, if I measure the distance from this point to this point, and then if I measure the distance from this point to this point, then the distance will remain the same. It is again intuitive idea. We can think it. It is actually a normal thing. See, metric space has developed from only our natural spaces. Natural spaces means, I should not say natural space, only from the, you know, from real line, R2, from this only, metric space has developed. Okay? And this one is known as this one was symmetry. Okay. And the third one. This third property which I'm going to write. This is a thing that we have been learning since class nine. Yes. We have been learning this since class nine. And this thing is famous by this geometric figure. Yes, triangle. In triangle, or I should try to draw it in this way, a general one. In triangle, we all know the sum of any two sides is more than the third one. Okay, otherwise a triangle cannot be possible. So this third one, third uh, axiom, is known as triangle inequality, and it says that distance between any two points. Distance between any two points x and z is less than or equal to distance between x and some other point y plus distance between y and z for all x, y, z belongs to x. I think it needs more clarification. This is known as triangle inequality because of its similarity with this actual triangle inequality. And why this is why this happens, we can uh, definitely do it from a triangle, or we can do some other stuff also. We can think it in this way: in my space, I have three points x, y, and z. When I am connecting two points one by one. This one is x, this one is y, this one is z. So x, y, y, z, z, x, or x, z, I should say. So what happens now? Three of these three lines just intuitively think if I add any two, then third one will only also come. Okay? This happens in all our known spaces. Now, we are extending this concept. We are saying if any abstract set follows this idea or follows this axiom this one this one and this one if an abstract set or the points of the abstract set follows these three axioms then only i shall call that space as or that set as a matrix space or in better way i will call this d as a metric and actually this pair x comma d this pair will be known as matrix space but when we will be too much familiar with all the basic ideas then we shall start saying this x oh sorry 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 this x as matrix space okay this is the main idea of matrix space how matrix space arises how matrix space is formed I shall show them in the next video but before that uh, before ending this one I said here if and only if right now if this thing happens that 
d of x y is equal to 0 if x is equal to y but x is equal to um, okay sorry So if I break this to break this thing, then it will become d of x y is zero if x is equal to y. That is, if two points are same, then the distance between them are same. There is zero. And the second part is, if the distance is zero, then the points are actually same. But if I exclude this one, exclude this one and use this one only here apart from this one then i shall get a new type of uh, function which will be known as symmetric this one will be known, called this d will then be called as pseudo matrix okay this one will be called pseudo matrix and the pseudo matrix along with this x will be known as pseudo matrix space okay so this was the basic ideas and concept about matrix space metric is actually vaguely represents the distance and again in this when distance comes then it must be positive it can be zero obviously a zero is included in r plus and here is the first positivity that is even only if the points are same the distance is same if the points, uh, if the distance is zero, then the point, oh, oh I said wrong again. If the points are same, then the distance is zero. And if the distance is zero, then the points are same. But when it comes to the zero metric, it changes. It becomes, if the points are same, then, then the distance will be zero. But the distance is zero doesn't always imply that the points are same. Okay, and the second one, is same for both of them metric and pseudo metric is same for both of them the symmetry that is distance between one point with another is same as if we measure the distance from the second point to the first point now third one is triangle inequality okay while solving the problems of uh, metric space we shall find out this one this one becomes hardest to prove when we hand it, a problem will be given to us, a matrix will be or a function will be given to us, and they will ask us to prove that this is a metric matrix space. Then this one will be the most difficult to prove sometimes. Okay, so I think uh, for introduction it's enough. You guys watch the video again. If you don't understand any concept, I think I have tried my best to explain the ideas. Uh, go through the books I have said. My personal taste is Evan Mukherjee and Crazy, obviously. If you guys want to go through, you can go through Malik Arora and also Crazy, which I said before. Try to solve problems if you can, but uh, in the next video, I am going to give some more deeper ideas about matrix space and then I shall solve several other problems also. I think. This lecture series will not only be useful for those who are in BSc right now, it will be useful for those who are actually preparing from other competitive examinations like WBCS, UPSC, those who have taken the optional mathematics paper. And obviously it is useful for IIT JAM, though it is not given in official JAM syllabus, but sometimes for the completeness part, uh, in the sequence part, some ideas of metric space they give questions from that okay apart from that in uh, msc entrance test you can find this metric space related problem like in my university's entrance test i can remember there was uh, two very difficult problems from a metric space was there i'm not going to say whether i could solve it or not i <laughs> i think i solved one of them I, I could solve one of them. The second one was uh, really difficult, really difficult one. And uh, later I found out that in some book, I'm not going to disclose that. Uh, but I shall, I shall solve those problems while solving problems because I can remember those two. Okay, 
so you guys do your best all the best and belated happy independence day to everyone be free freedom has come at the cost of too many too much blood too much blood shed gave us our freedom actually not those I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not becoming any you know I'm not becoming any type of skeptical or uh, political but I want to say one thing that independence or freedom is what we require the most in our life if there is no independence or no freedom then we cannot enjoy the thing or we cannot actually leave we may leave but will be just a machine which takes oxygen and excels carbon dioxide. Apart from that, freedom has nothing to do. Freedom is only for our living. I believe so. And our freedom has come after too much bloodshed. Okay. May Almighty give the souls of those martyrs in peace. Netaji, Kolasin and all other all those who must have the Surya Sen, all those who give their give their life for the day that we see today. Okay. All the best to everyone. Jai Hind, Bande Mataram, Namaskar.